on. They don't like to go to this map against Renegades. Uh, I think that sort of tells a story in itself that this is going to be nigh on impossible for X-Diables. In best of threes, you know, Mirage is kind of that map that almost seems to get taken out in the second band phase every day of the week. You know, you get your initial bands out. No one really wants to be picking Mirage in that first map pick, but no one really wants to play it that much or leave it towards that third map beside it. So almost always it, you're seeing it get taken out in the second band phase. Either way, though, Renegade's starting out T-side and Mirage here against x Wolves, who have no more room for error. They must win every map from here to try to win this grand final. That's already into the B-bomb site right now. Renegades are not messing around at all. That bomb plant on the floor, courtesy of Malta. Uh, x Wolves are going to have to now make a 5-on-5 five five retake happen when Renegades has been given all the time in the world to set up for this post plant as best they want to. And Hat is putting on a show. A triple kill from him and Alistair cleans one more up as well. That was very sharp indeed. Barely any shots fired in the round and almost all of them were headshots. Renegades walks away with the win. Yep. Just uh, absolute cleanup. This is why retakes on the B site, which are one-dimensional and only come through market, are so difficult to complete. Just running into close angles and getting sprayed down, and even with a Glock, it doesn't look too difficult to be lining up a lot of those kills. Unfortunate for X-Diables. Maybe could have uh, thought about trying to get some more of that short control or maybe a bit of a flank on towards apartments. There was a flash over the top from Licky there, but I don't think it really hit its mark. You know, you'd want to be blind those players close towards market, so maybe not going deep enough. And unfortunately, when the CTs off the back of what they think is a good flash dive straight through that market smoke, they get absolutely domed. That's the first pistol that Renegades have actually picked up in this grand final. So that's a welcome change for them. But they will have to deal with the force by through from X-Diewolves, as has become customary. Hmm. Pistols and armor. We had the same start. Um, oh, that's a good opening kill. Getting rid of one of those pistol armors. And APOC getting pressured in towards connector here. It's going to drop the smoke for safety, and that's where this round might start to slow down a little. No one really want to connect, uh, contest too much through utility. That's a nice little push from Savage, though, but Sicko and Malta seem quite cocked on to it. He just gets caught. This is going from bad to worse right now for x A bit of body shooting as well. We had the same start for Renegades uh, actually on their own uh, on on their Mirage pick in towards DreamHack Open Grand Final, and uh, it took a while for Xdarbles to get any rounds together on that CT side. It seemed like they had to get some money together really at the tail end of the half. So again, I think it, it's looking like right now Renegades might go on a bit of a streak at the start of the half for the second time here. That's a nice little body block of the smoke from Apoc. Yeah, obviously. On the T side, though, so that's a little bit of a change up for Renegades. Licky catches Malta. One player out of the picture. Maybe a couple more picks to come through here for X Diwolves if they get their timings right. Apoc going to land a shot with that Deagle, and Sicko doubles down onto Licky. It's just Sterling now. So any chances of winning the round seem to have slipped away from them. But still more opportunities for damage and. Maybe an AK through to the next round if Sterling gets lucky and is able to get out of here. Sicko is waiting for him though. And converts his third kill of the round and map so far. 2-0 for Renegades. Yeah, in that last game on Mirage, you had uh, looking for Org pick up that second round win with the, the pistols. So unfortunately, not on track for what you had for their last game. They're kind of behind the eight ball in that regard. We'll have to take a bit of a save and wait until that next round to really get going on that CT side. That should be a bit of a freebie here for Renegades. Hats is already into the A bomb site, though they actually haven't cleared out under balcony and it doesn't look like Inns is going to do so. He'll lose his life and Licky might even be able to double down here. Savage got one with a Zeus. What's going on in this round for Renegade? Sterling, another kill. And now Malta and Alistar are tasked with a two on three clutch. Yes, there's no armor for the CT side, but they have an AK in their hands and that's always a scary prospect. Alistar taking the challenge. We'll put all of the CTs down to pretty much a sliver of HP bar Hazard, who may be a little bit more interested in saving that AK if things come to it. 
Ultimate will go through this smoke. He hides behind it for now. Waiting for the push to come through from the CT side. Apartment's still dirty. And now Malta needs to clutch out the one on three. Time of the essence, though, for X-Direwolves. And I think they might have timed themselves out of this round. Certainly now that Malta's found that kill. Sterling he will get the final one onto Malta, marking it as a very expensive round for Renegades. But in the end, X-Direwolves will not be able to pick the round up. And they will also not be able to take the AK through. So, all things considered... Definitely could have been worse for Renegades, the way that it started. Just such weird places to be dying anti-eco, you know. Inns dies default on A site, and one player dies in jungle for Renegades, and then the rest of them die on the B site. It's like, what's going on? So split up, uh, up against the pistols. Almost kind of felt like they were trying to play against a gun round, you know, when you do those 3 one ones and you got your couple of contingencies on the lurk, but it's not really something that you need anti-eco so much, you know. You've already got a weaponry advantage, just often see the no-nonsense approach of just group up and push. Malta, trying to apply pressure on that extremity, cops a lot of damage from an HE grenade. He really is trying to isolate Savage on that big side anchor. And in the meanwhile, you got this standoff in towards middle. Well, Alistair will have to be a little bit careful here because there are a couple of CTs. Only gets the leg shot onto Hazard. He will escape with his life. That's in the meanwhile. To work his way through connector alongside Sicko. So they've now gotten control of mid at least Renegades. Where do they go with it? Slowing this down in the mid round. Smoke should fade favorably for Hats, I would imagine. And it doesn't even seem like Apox, considering that there might be a player in towards window here. So that's a freebie. Could have been a second, and it is a second for Hats. That's Second player just being so low. It's an easy mop up and Renegade just popping, pumping the brakes right now. They're waiting for more mistakes out of the CTs as they slowly encroach on that big site. Well, it's what Renegades loves to do, isn't it? Just that cross map gameplay. Yeah, find a pick here or there, slow things down, see if someone's going to make a rotation and then pick them off as well and make your life even easier, which is now where we find ourselves. Sicko with another good entry gets the better of Savage. That's pretty much the round done and dusted. Sterling. Might be looking to try and save the orb, but there are a lot of T's that are quite eager to hunt him down. Sicko cops a shot. Sterling over commits for the kill, though, and he will be taken down by the combined forces of Sicko and Inns. And Renegades are now up to a 4 and 0 start, which is, uh, you know, not too shabby at all. It's obviously still got a ways to go hmm. to equalize what we saw in the first half of Overpass, but it's about as good of a start as you can ask for. Yeah, doing some good work on their T side as well. I think similar to the last Mirage game, you had Renegades start the half very nicely. So maybe X Direwolf could be a bit slow starting on this map and wait for that loss bonus to really uh, come up so that they can get these really good buys together with AWPs and Util and whatnot. Do you remember them doing a lot of double orping on this map, CT? Yeah, I think I think so. I think Renegades are always the kind of team that likes to go towards double orps. No, yeah, I'm talking X about Direwolf. So. Well, I was going to say for X Direwolves, it's also definitely an option, but not to the same extent yeah. uh, as what we'll expect to see from Renegades. So it's obviously going to be a factor if, if the money's there for x Wolves, but I don't think that they're necessarily going to be a, a team that really tries to force it if, if it's not. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, we're not going to see double or glass cannon or something like that, which, I mean, I guess you don't see too often from Renegades, but it's something that sometimes does crop up here and there. Looking at that last Mirage game as well, um, between Looking for Org and Renegades, and I'm like, 20 to 8 first kills for Looking for Org. 20 to 8, and they lost 16-13. Hmm. Oh my god. Okay, Savage with the 5-7. Savage with the 5-7. Excuse me. You're not supposed to be able to do that. The grenade is probably going to take him down, but it still leaves the remaining two Renegades players with a bit too much work to do. <laughs> How have we gotten there? I'm just look. I'm looking at my other monitor, like looking at the stats. I'm like, hmm, how's this game gonna go? And then a classic play that you can never account for, just the pistol at a position like pillar, no less. That short pillar. It's ludicrous to see a multi frag like that. Well, sometimes Savage is that kind of player, isn't he? We saw a little bit of it on Overpass. Uh, it made a bit more sense when Renegades were running through Monster Tunnel. Just stacked up, but 
Not how I expected the first round to come about for X Direwolves, and I dare say the same can be said for Renegades. That is a very nice response, though. Hats just completely cleans up Sterling. The first pick going the way of Renegades. It's something that I, you know, I, it's what I was talking about with that Savage, um, bit before that Savage pick came in. I mean, first kill seemed like last time on this map went so heavily towards looking for walk, so it's a worrying sign when Renegades won that game after losing 20 to eight in first pick, so, but they're already finding an early man advantage in a pretty critical gun round here. It's gonna make X Star Wars life even harder than it has to be. Yeah, if, if I remember correctly, there was a lot of instances of Renegades winning like three V5s or two V5s on the mm. T side of Mirage. Mm. And it was just sort of a bit bamboozling that next Direwolves were getting off to such good starts, but they were basically I mean, not able to convert any of them. Like, I cannot remember the last time I watched a game where a team won 20 to 8 opening duels and didn't win the map. Yeah, you would think uh, with like 75 to 80% certainty, you should be uh, be closing rounds out when you get the opening duel. Yeah. I, I remember seeing a statistic like that somewhere that, that that's about the number of rounds that get converted from five on fours. Yeah. That's what Renegades are looking to do here, though they did just drop Malta. So back to the four on four. But it has given them enough space to get into the A bomb site, so they're not feeling too bad about it. Alistar gets the flick across onto APOC as well. Quite nicely done. He's going to leave Renegades again with the numbers advantage. And now X Direwolves are wondering if they should really even go for this one. Players starting to drop here and there, and money is really problematic on that CT side right now. So Savage and Hazard. Better of it, and we'll opt to save. Always hard when you lose that catwalk player. It's like almost that extra layer of pressure from multiple angles. You know, all of X Direwolves were towards Murder Hole and towards CT. So as soon as you lose APOC on catwalk, there, you know, how many retake rounds have we seen go the way of the CTs where they're running up through CT or pressuring Murder Hole? And you get that second wave of pressure in from connector and it's like the t's are almost getting caught in a crossfire of of those two arms of pressure for the ones that are playing a little bit more forward towards jungle or towards uh towards close ct or on triple or something like that and from there that's kind of your launching pad to complete the retake but when it becomes a little bit more one-dimensional and you're all coming in from ct that's where things definitely get a little bit more difficult and uh, unsurprisingly, after they lose that player, the rest of the round doesn't go so great. 5-1 for Renegades. Star Wolves putting another buy together here, so still trying to fight their way through this half. Oh, what else can they do at this point, Pilski? Try their best. Smoke is going to be tucked down, but oh, Alistair, he wanted to try and get in front of it. Didn't quite get the timing. Would have been a risky peek with the AWP. Mm. Back into this 1-4 kind of gameplay. Hats lurking down middle, trying to find a timing towards Connector, and the rest of Renegades were grouped up towards A, but after being delayed by that utility, you see the additional player, Sicko, floats over towards middle as well. Bomb being picked up from Spawn as Malta, chucking a smoke into window here to try to set up these other two Renegades players for a bit more success, and... What started as a 1-4 with the lurk towards middle has quickly turned into an A split. Three players on the bomb side to defend with though, and Sterling from Ticket Booth catching Sicko. Puts a bit of a spanner in the works for Renegades. Two players close behind this smoke, and Alistar will definitely not be able to kill both. Maybe one with the AWP, or perhaps it'll go his way. Hat's got Licky, and APOC wasn't watching the smoke as Alistar crept through. Just another case of perfect timings from Renegades, and Sterling will have to pull off a little bit of magic here. He doesn't quite manage to get the shot onto the bomb planter. Regardless, there would have been time for Renegades to scurry someone back over there and pick the bomb up and plant it themselves. So Savage doesn't really have much to do but to save. And this will be a 6-1 lead for Renegades. There is that one little speed bump where they lost the round to Savage's 5-7 at Macca's, but aside from that, Renegades have really not missed a beat here on Mirage. Yeah, and those are the kind of rounds where it's not something that's repeatable on the, the CT side. It's something we see a lot in like Asian CS where <laughs> one team are kind of struggling to put anything together. Then they win a couple of upset rounds with the pistols and it's like, yeah, that's cool. But 
you know, it's good to see those rounds picked up, but those are niche circumstances, and if you can't get your ducks in a row in the gun rounds, it's not really going to help you too much anyway. Yeah. Well, that is uh, something that I think x Wolves are starting to find out here as well. Orp's going to go back over to Sterling, but he doesn't have any money to buy Util, doesn't have head armor. Of course, you know, not a huge factor, but you just see how... This fire is, is still a little bit difficult for X-Dials to get through cleanly. It's not a bad one by any means. Savage even saving the AK helps out a little bit. Uh, Renegade's alright. Straight back out into mid. Slow sort of defaulty gun round, at least with the initial utility pressure. And I think Renegade's going to go back to what they were trying to do last round, which is Hats. Is over here towards the middle. Bit of utility pressure, trying to make it look like they're still opting or trying to buy for that mid control. But the rest of Renegades, I think, looking to creep out a ramp. Alistair on the angle. It's going to Molotov out that ticker booth, and Renegades pressuring this A side heavily. Sterling continues to get frags with that orb. They don't seem to be that impactful at the moment, even though a lot of them are opening frags. Renegades are still finding ways to convert rounds, and with the shots like. Hazza getting the kill, or Hats rather getting the kill onto Hazza from top mid to bottom. I mean, Renegades are really on fire at the moment. Sterling, again, he's just not prepared to let this one fall by the wayside, is he? He's no. working really hard on the CT side. Yeah, I think x Diables made that conscious decision after seeing that mid-lurk player to go and isolate him and pick him off. And that's worked a treat for them. Renegades not feeling comfortable enough to commit in towards this A side. Sterling... As in's locked off in towards Palace there, but he's going to get off the line because that's when the pressure comes in to be, and that's where in's can activate a little bit more on the lurk, but he's not really going to matter too much if that bomb gets dropped over in B apartments. Yeah, all from Sicko. I mean, he doesn't really have too many chances there, does he? Good swing from APOC, and so in's will have to save. Unfortunate one for Renegades again because, you know, they had their chances, but Sterling just sort of took it into his own and ran away with it. You asked about the double AWP earlier on in the piece, Pilski. Well, now it is on offer. And x Wolves have opted to go straight in towards it as well. Hmm. Well, I'm Bit looking... Of a freebie. They pick up the second AWP for, for free off Renegades, but... I mean, it was an 8-7 first half in that last Mirage game. And I think Renegades were up... What is that? Like eight to two or seven to two or something like that. And then X Divals finished the half with five in a row, which kind of indicates to me that once they got their money together and once they uh, got a little bit of loss bonus, uh, they started to dominate a little bit. So keeping an eye on X Divals now. Oh. oh my God, almost lost Licky right off the bat. Yeah, I love really wouldn't be surprised uh, if in this next gun round, x Divals just put an AWP on Ticket Boot and just post on ramp like that. Well, this round isn't really much to shout about for Renegades. Walter's on 9 HP. The entire cohort bar ins is running around with pistols. He obviously was saving the AK through from the previous round, which puts him at a little bit of an economic deficit to the rest of the lads. I'm not sure how that's going to affect him going into the next round. He's just going to be a little bit lack of uh, the money. Can't get the better of Sterling there either, so... Nothing extra picked up in this one for Inns, unfortunately. Now Licky gets to do some aim practice with that, or... Sterling certainly doesn't need it. Licky maybe needs to get the ball rolling a little bit, heading into the gun rounds more so. That's uh, a nice kill from Hats. If he could even swing here onto Licky, who's low HP, there's another kill on Offa. So Sterling wants to make sure he doesn't drop here. Wow, that was great movement. HE nade up in the air, just a little bit of pre-fire spam with the shoulder. Takes another gun off X Diables. And now, I mean, three guns up. It's not too bad for them. Should be moving through this CT side a little bit more comfortably, but they need to make up some more rounds. Keen to see if we are going to see that AWP towards Ticket Booth just post that up on ramp because it feels like Renegades are just peeking out that part of the map time and time again looking for picks, but... Not this round. Does seem like maybe a short split on the cards. A 1 4. That's a really nice opener from Hats. Yeah, exactly what you want to be seeing from him. Savage is going to dunk an 8 into mid, but it won't really do anything to Hats. He just backs away in time. 
Mid control again established for Renegades. It, it has been a key point of the map for them. They've always had at least one player in this map, area of the map, and it's not always necessarily been the, the focal point, but they've had some presence there every single round. Savage with the orb. Ooh. He's going to grab himself too. Renegade's just running around the corner like they don't think he's there anymore, but he didn't fall off the line. And he actually punishes them for it. Still, Alistair is up to the challenge. Entering into the B-bomb site. He gets another frag with that orb. Licky is out with the M4 in hand. Malta trying to take him in a fight. But Alistair, again, gets the kill. This time off the back of a Molotov. So he's getting it done with pretty much every possible weapon in the arsenal for Renegades in this round. Orp, pistol, Molotov. And Malta gets the final one with the Galil. Nice round for Renegades. Up to 7-3 now. And money once again is in a poor spot for the CT side. Yeah, no doubt. Renegades just keep changing things up. Pressure towards the A side of the map. That time they go for a 1-4 and just apply a lot of pressure into middle. And there really was opportunities for some more multi-fragging to come in. But Savage at the critical juncture, unfortunately, doesn't hit the right shot. Hazard gets isolated up on the B apartments. Renegades to close that round out now into the anti-eco looking for their eight this team side has been quite dominant for them yeah definitely has and it doesn't seem like that's going to be changing anytime soon yet another round where mid control and mid presence seems to be the pivotal point for renegades hats has been very good on mirage he's 17 and 7 i mean he's like literally getting all the kills at the moment. He is just doing so much work for Renegades. Inns has one kill, five deaths, and Hats is there at 17 and 7. So I think that kind of goes to show the way that this game is played out. Hats is just having a blinder. One plant goes down again. Moving in a similar direction to what we saw in the first half of Overpass. There's the second for Inns, doubling his frags in that round. That's a big pog moment. I do like this graphic, by the way. I don't know if uh, you've been keeping up with it, but every time I see that pop up, I think it's quite a nice way of just showing the, the ebb and flow of the half. Yep. Would agree with you. Bit of a visual representation. Very satisfying to the eyes. Mm. It's, you know, we as gamers love the stonks meme, and that's what it really reminds me of. Ooh, hold on. Double underpass aggression here. Is a bit of a change up for the CT side. Well, Renegades have a couple of players headed in that direction as well. And as ever, <laughs> Hats is just not missing. He's got a magnet on everyone's head. Oh boy. Flash to top middle. Almost set up APOC to win that duel on to Alistair, and they bloody need it at this point. Like. The first frat, first picks are definitely not going 20th day this game in the favor of X Direwolves. I think if that's going to be the case, that's going to be Renegades winning uh, a game. We talk about the, the magnet in the head for, for hats. You know, we were making Squid Game references. I was watching this like Alice in Borderland thing on Netflix where the, when, when people do something wrong, they just get like aimbotted in the head by some like third party entity. That's kind of like what hats is doing right now. Yeah. Just one bees everybody, regardless of what angle they're on. Yeah. Gonna get another one. It'd be pretty cheeky if he did here. 2 HP. Apoc will see the shadows, but the flash, well, it was good. If Hats had any more than 2 HP there, I think he actually gets away with that and probably kills Apoc, but not the case this time. Alters into the B bomb site, but he's not able to win the duel, and now it's a bit of a shambles for Renegade. They've got some quick decisions to make. Luckily, Inns has pushed his way into A and gotten a lot of control there. Smoke's fading, but not favorably for him, and the round might be over. Renegades have nine seconds. Sterling is hosted on the line. It can't be Sterling. It's Sicko to get that kill. It had to be Alistair, but Sicko can't plant the bomb in time. He's too late. And Hazard will get one kill. Two, not quite. <laughs> Just what the one. Watching? What am I watching, Jordan? I mean, it's just Renegades in that that sort of uh, mid-round situation trying to pull off another cheeky one, isn't it? Where they've got Malta into B. They think we're going to rotate all the way from A to B with 20 seconds left on the clock. Get the bomb plant down. Four seconds to go. But because Malta loses that fight, they can't do that anymore. Then they go, all right, we'll go back to A. Inns is on there. And then Inns also drops. So 
Then I guess at that point, Siko and Alistair are up the creek without a paddle. They've got nowhere to go. They try to make it, but won't happen. And ex Wolves have gotten a leg back into this round and this half a little bit quicker than we expected. First kill, though, going the way of ex Wolves Never hurts. Early peeking towards Palace. Might be settling the nerves a little. Renegades grouped up in pairs right now, looking for a peek towards middle or towards apartments. So Savage needs to be quite careful. That's fallen off the line, back into the safety of the bench. See what kind of magic hats can pull off here. He's going to be the one that's boosted up into the sniper's window. And he's on the line. Oh, nice timing. Sterling wasn't expecting Jeez. that. And Alistar also pulls the trigger into B. It's turned back on its head for Renegades with 45 seconds left. They've got so much map control, so much time to work with here as well. But they do have to get past Savage, who's been pretty nifty in this map. 11 and 9. It hasn't been fantastic, but he's had his moments, that's for sure. And he's still biding his time there on the site itself. Finally gives away his position. This is where it starts to get a bit more difficult for Renegades. They'll have to jump back up and get the bomb. But having dispatched of Savage, it makes it pretty straightforward. Licky is on short. Not spotted out just yet, but now Alistair has that info. And Renegades probably have the round as well. Good to see Renegades, like even in a 4 on 5 like that, still played to their outs. Looking for that peek into window. Hats is set up for that one. Alistair's going to be able to get that peek into B. And then once they're in that four on three, it's not like they're trying to force the issue or anything. Even with like 40 seconds on the clock, Renegades are still freezing. Still waiting for more of those mistakes to come out of the CT side. Hats gets given another peek in towards jungle side. Renegades just making has a sweat on default there for such a long time. You know... It's, it's hard to explain it um, unless you've kind of been in that situation in a, in a comp game that means a lot to you. But when you're like sitting on that site and the, you know the other teams in B apartments and they're just not coming, like it, it's like more and more pressure on you, you know? It doesn't get easier from that point. It's almost easier when they're running at you in a more, you know, normal kind of fashion. And it's like, oh, well, I've been in this situation before. I just need to multi-frag my way out. I take this angle, then I take this angle. They're trying to trade me normally. But when they're making you sweat it a little bit, that's it's almost harder to defend at that point. Oh, Savage. I don't know what it is about him in the 5.7, <laughs> but it seems to be working. Just give it, give it the 5.7, mate, at this point. You know what? That's a little bit... Zoking esque pills. <laughs> oh god. Oh man. Alistar won't be happy missing that shot because it's going to mean the end of his life as well. Apoc can't retrieve the orb, but there's a bit more damage onto Malta in this round. I mean, it's looking a bit awkward for Renegades. Oh, it's the half pies again, isn't it? Is that yeah. what we're seeing? Might be. Hello. Uh oh. oh. Big, big shot into the back of Malta's bald head. Unfortunate. Malt malt might be building a little bit after this <laughs> malt, round. Malt, he's molting, perhaps. He's molting. He's molting. <laughs> um, but yeah, look, honestly, this is a bit more difficult for Renegades than they might have liked it to have been. Hats, you know, he's still having a stellar map, but he's got to be thinking like, come on, guys, can someone else just help me out here? Like, do I have to do everything myself? Has to go pick the bomb up now as well. Uh, I saw him in the fitness first uh, in his shirt in his interview the other day. Uh, so he's probably keen to get to the gym, but unfortunately, uh, X Diables are going to pick up that fifth round, so that possibly will extend things a little bit longer. Um, I got good news for you, Jordan, if you're a fan of Zoking. Yeah. Yeah, I think next week there's this event, um, IEM Full Asia. Oh. Yeah. I'm I, don't a fan know, of I don't know if you saw that was coming up. I don't know what I I don't know what you've heard, Pilski, but I'm uh, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> I'm a big fan of the Asian Counter Strikes. Sometimes, when it eventually does roll around here and there. Uh, but I get to let a fifth go over to X Direwolves and uh, so grab himself another kill. So this final round of the half might actually stabilize things a little bit for the CT side. They get to six. That wouldn't be too bad. Renegades didn't come into this with a great buy. 
And now they're just sending it into the B bomb site. Hazard is there to defend alongside APOC, and he's got a lot of room to work with. You can't see this one going well for Renegades. And it's starting to fall apart at the seams, isn't it? Hats is the last alive. He's had a phenomenal half. 22 and 9. It'll probably be 22 and 10 as well. Unless he pulls off one more freebie before he goes. As it survives on HP. 8 HP. And Sterling finishes it off. So in the end, six rounds for X Direwolves. More than I might have given them a few rounds ago. But certainly still not enough to get too excited about out of that first half. Still looking pretty good for Renegades. Nine six is the scoreline right now as we head into the second half of Mirage. It is do or die for X Dials Pilski, but six rounds. I feel like that's more than we expected that they would get actually out of that half. So they did a bit of a better job towards the back end than they did previously. Hopefully that'll be enough to sort of get them over the line here and force uh, another map. Bit of a storm straight out of ramp here for. X Direwolves all the way deep into jungle, trying to get that plant down on towards triple and set themselves up for a decent post plan. And Renegades setting up a bit of a soft net around them towards CT and middle, but losing picks towards that window area is going to make things a little more difficult. Yeah, Haz is in a great spot to shut this down, but Malta and Inns combining for the kill there. Apoc will be checked by Sitko, and it starts to fall apart a little bit for X Direwolves. Renegades are just hitting too many heads. Time is a factor though, and they'll have to pick things up pretty quickly. Savage is by Firebox, they should know it, and they do. And Malta gets on the defuse. It's gonna be a pretty confident one in the end uh, for Renegades, and they'll actually win both the pistols here on Mirage. Fair's fair, right? They did lose both the pistols on Overpass, and now they've been able to pick both of them up 
on Mirage. I'm not sure what the crown's for. Malta thinks he's a king or a prince or something, maybe. I don't know. Renegades 10 to 6, though, is the scoreline, and it's looking like they're the kings of ANZ once again. If X Divals don't have something to say about it in the next four or five rounds. Well, they're looking to say something about it now, Jordan, as usual. The second round buy coming in for X Divals. Only three grenades to work with in this entire round, and one of them gets thrown into windows straight off the bat. One four kind of set up APOC on the lurk towards Palace. The rest of X Divals looking to fight middle, and the run boost across top mid is quite well timed with a flash from the CT side, actually. Bit of spam from Sterling is uh, actually chunking Sicko down. He's managed to get the opener on the Sicko, picking the pace up a little bit, but oof, luckily Malta's there to cover it off. Otherwise, Alistair with the scout would not be feeling too good, and maybe he still isn't. Savage is on 6 HP. The nade will get it done. And that is an M4A1S picked up for Alistair, so a juggle of weaponry is going to go back in the favor of Renegades. It's lucky he had it as well, because Sterling presents himself as a kill. Apoc should be a freebie here for Hats, which is making way too much noise. And so Hazard is alone. So what makes for a great anchoring player is knowing when to push and when to fall back into a safe position. So similar to carpets or apartments on Inferno and being that pit player on the CT side. Hats showing some great uh, initiative, pushing in towards apartments and just getting himself an early opening kill. Alistair, obviously equally helping to turn around that round. He gets rid of Savage, he gets his pick on the Surly Crossing short, and then he closes the round out as well. So really, he's the one who's done a lot of the hard work there, pulling Renegades up without by their bootstraps and avoiding potentially getting upset early on, which is really going to make things quite hard on you on that CT side. So... Now heading into the anti-eco against the Deagles. x Wolves looking for some damage. Money's still not quite there for Renegades. Can't really say that this is going to be the freest round for Renegades. They have had their troubles against buys like this already. A good start from Inns. Sort of settles the nerves a little bit. Yeah. Good news is I think, you know, you can't buy 5-7 on the T side. So I'm sure they're feeling a little bit better about that. <laughs> In the end, Renegades are kind of getting through it without too much of a loss. Licky and Savage still have something to say about it in this round, but Bomb is dropped and it's a difficult place to retrieve it from with the guns trained in that direction by Renegades. Savage is going to have to do that job himself and he cannot also get the better of Licky and we are at 12 and 6 by the time x Wolves get their first buy through in the park. Yep. So... Nice anti-eco does build up the CT money a little bit for Renegades, but it's still a bit shaky. x Wolves, let's see what they've got in store for their first gun round here. Uh, how many rounds? They had a really nice start to their Mirage T side last time. In fact, they were able to kind of take the lead a little bit. So let's see. Uh, obviously, the, the opening part of the half has not gone so great for them, having lost that uh, pistol and force buy, but... Let's see if they can find some success similar to that DreamHack Open Grand Final on the earlier couple of gun rounds on the T side. They're going to take a tactical timeout. They know it's do or die here. The reverse sweep is obviously done map by map, and this map is already not looking so great. So it has to kind of have to be here on now because you need to be able to have the stamina to bring it back all the way after playing 30 rounds on overpass. It would take some crazy amounts of tenacity and stamina for x Divals to try to make anything like a reverse sweep happen, so momentum really needs to start here. Right here, right now, in round number 19. Look, there are still some to play with for x Divals, but it, if it doesn't start soon, that CT economy starts to build up a little further than it already has, and I think we all know Renegades is just capable of closing this map out pretty comfortably. Apoc and Inns inside of the smoke go past one another like ships in the night. Savage is holding a grenade in hand, and that's going to go poorly for him. Inns can't quite get the better of Apoc, but he does get him down to 9 HP. So that's good news for Renegades. And they've progressed back into Connect to take control of that area of the map. Sterling will lose his life on the timing to Sicko. And it's pretty much 
over and done with it, say, at this point. Licky 18 HP, APOC 9. Licky has now lost his life as well. And Hazard just can't find a way to get into any of these rounds. How many times we've seen him in a good spot, but just not able to really get anything done because it's too little too late. Everyone else is dead. Yeah, they've double smoke connector as well. APOC, the one smoke he throws is the connector smoke, which is the exact same one Hazard just put down. APOC lucky to get alive, uh, across alive there rather. And Hazard has actually taken a bit of agency into CT here. Yeah, so he might well still catch Malta, who's going to peek off the timing, and he won't actually manage to make it work, but he does get some damage onto Hazard, gets the info there as well. Tap onto the bomb, Alistar almost lost his life there. Hazard was picking that pace up quite a bit faster than Renegades expected, but it goes without a hitch in the end in the two-on-one, and Renegades get to 13. That's cheeky from Inns, man. Takes Savage out, then flicks around, dink onto APOC. Round was definitely getting quite messy from there, unfortunately. X Direwolves, not enough time being bought for uh, Hazard to come into the round. As you mentioned, through no fault of their own, you see in the highlights there, every pick that went the way of Renegades was due to them just pushing into the T and winning the duel. Good news for X Direwolves, though, is they bring that round quite close. That's going to make the money a little bit more fragile, but it's not crazy bad for Renegades. And now X Direwolves off the back of the bomb plant will buy up and again, Looks like they want to creep out of eight. Apoc almost finds the timing there, but both of the CTs now keeping their heads well and truly down. Malta will recover the spray and gets Licky. Bit of damage out there on the Savage as well. It's starting to look better and better for Renegades. Charging their way toward 14. They've got a four on three, and it'll have to be Hazard to make the difference. Canceling the rotation for these two players. He's pushed off the line by the Molotov though. And Alistar will not be denied. Inns might just get it done himself. And there you have it. Renegades now up to 14. I, I think the pendulum has just swung a bit too far in their direction now. And there's no coming back from this now. Yeah, I think four players alive is, is going to make things a little more difficult. That's where that CT money is built up to the point where you can really start to put together a couple of buys in a row, even if things aren't going so well for you. As for Hextiables... I mean, the good news is loss bonus plus bomb plant means that AKs and armor come out, decent utility across the board, enough to kind of get things done. But, but outside of that, there's really not anything to get too excited about. It's just the one for one, so not ideal, but Malta's going to get some time to put the incendiary down in front of him, play a bit of a different position. Sterling's all over it, though. This is the first time that we've seen an advantage for X Diwolves in a little while. They'll want to make sure they can convert it. Sicko's caught out in no man's land and doesn't get any assistance in the end. Hats will get run over as well. So much better from X Diwolves here. They've just brawled their way out onto the A bomb side of the back of some uh, awkward aim jewels, I'd say, for Renegades. And now Alistar will just try to make it as expensive as possible. Great molly. Would have thought it would have cleared out Hazard and started burning him a little bit earlier on. And he has heard the flames tickling Hazard's feet. Will calibrate onto the player, drops the smoke on the bomb. And you thought he was going to go for a bit of a smoke defuse or threaten the smoke defuse, but Sterling on the wraparound through Murder Hole, taking matters into his own hands, does close that for X Direwolves. The first gun round of a few that they'll need to get their foot back in the door, so to speak. As uh, I talked about it before, four alive for Renegades means that their money was more than good enough to put together a strong buy once again, which is what you're seeing. But also casting your mind down to the loss bonus as well as how little they've got in the bank after losing this round, then you'll you'll realize that this could be a critical round for X Tyrells to get closer towards that double digits. Close enough is not good enough, Pilski. There are no second chances for X Direwolves here. They need to win this map. They've got a long way still to do it. It has started to pull back a little bit in their direction off the back of that last round, but it's a, it's a massive mountain to climb right now for the T side. They'll take some control in mid, put those smokes down, one into a Sniper's Window and one into Connector. But Alice has taken the opportunity to just creep in front of it. Cheeky. 
putting his head down and allowing the T to creep up. Comes out on the timing and he's going to find that first pick. More pressure on X Direwolves now who are grouping up towards this A side of the map but can't find clean entrance with that Molotov going down. How is Hazard just deleted Alistair with the Mac 10 on that angle? Sicko is still uncontested under the balcony. He's going to get himself a freebie. USP comes out. And he gets a headshot onto APOC, which really softens him up for ins. Molotov is going to force the push coming out from him. But in the end, the rotations come across from Renegades and APOC can't get too much more done past the trade. It is map and series point now for Renegades. One round away from just yet another victory here in the ANZ region. Absolutely. We've seen them win every major tournament for what feels like the last two years, Jordan. And uh, I don't think that's about to change. Certainly not. Spy doesn't look so great here for X Direwolves. Couple of Galils, not the greatest utility across the board. Smoke goes into window, but Alistair's well in front of it. He's finding a couple of picks as well, isn't he, Pilski? It has been a banger of a series from Alistair. We take a look at the stats from Overpass and here on Mirage as well, as it does get picked up by Sicko. Very little fanfare, I can imagine, for Renegades after that one, because that felt like it was a pretty routine grand final. Three and zero today. They've qualified for the major.